God prophesied that these things would begin to happen. And I'm going to say it very quickly. He said on December 31st, 2022, watch the House of Representatives. It would become the House of Cards. He said on June 6th of 2021, that those that are in the House that are a stench in front of God's sight would be removed and new faces would arise. And lastly, he said on July 12th, 2021, that we would come into historical moments concerning the Republican Party, even the Democratic Party, and God would be known as the party crasher. And I don't think God is done. We are in for a reset and a reorder that is by the hand of God himself. Good evening, everybody. I'm Gene Bailey, and you are watching Flashpoint. We're glad you're with us tonight. Tonight's one of those programs you need to go share it. A lot of stuff happening in the news today. Go share this on all your social media. Help get the word out. Flashpoint is about to talk about the events of the day, leading primarily with what happened with Speaker McCarthy. For that, let's go to Mike Garofalo with the news. Gene. We have breaking news from the House floor. By a 260 to 210 count, members voted this afternoon to vacate the Speaker's office, meaning Kevin McCarthy is no longer Speaker of the House. It's the first time this has ever happened in U.S. history. The vote took place after Florida's Matt Gates move on Monday evening to follow through on his threat to remove Speaker McCarthy after this past weekend's short-term budget deal. I rise to give notice of my intent to raise a question of the privileges of the House. Declaring the office of Speaker of the House of Representatives to be vacant, resolved that the office of Speaker of the House of Representatives is hereby declared to be vacant. McCarthy brought Florida GOP Congressman Matt Gates' motion to the floor today. Representative Tom Cole immediately moved to table that, but the motion failed with 11 Republicans voting with every Democrat present to move forward with the vote to remove the speaker. The House debated for one hour. Here are some of the highlights. We are here to eulogize the era of continuing resolution. We will not do it. We will not pass it. These bills can go. The spending may rise and fall as the years pass. But the notion that we're going to lump in the Department of Education and the Department of Labor with our military and our troops and our Border Patrol is fundamentally unserious and I would suggest chaotic. We cannot do that. It was only because we forced that to happen. And by the way, if we continue with Speaker McCarthy, the appropriations process will go right back to what he wanted it to go back to. Just a sideshow, just a puppet show. If this motion carries, the, the House will be paralyzed. We can expect week after week of fruitless ballots while no other business can be conducted. The Democrats will revel in Republican dysfunction and the public will rightly be repulsed. No living human has taken the vote we're about to take. It deserves that we pause, we reflect, that we consider deeply the ramification of our actions. It is lovely to hear from the principal architect of Mr. McCarthy's debt limit deal, but here's the reality. The only Republicans in America who believe that the debt limit deal was conservative are in this chamber right now. Because all over America, Republicans think that when you negotiated that debt limit deal, they took your lunch money. Once again, the final vote to vacate the speakership was 210 to 216 to 210, rather, with Kevin McCarthy being the first speaker in history to ever be removed. Seven members were absent from the vote. Gene, back to you. Thanks, Mike. So who's in charge now, the House, since the speaker's been ousted? Representative Patrick McHenry of North Carolina, who happens to be a McCarthy ally. He is now the interim speaker, Gene. Thanks, Mike, for that. Okay, those of you watching at home, you're probably wondering, how did this happen? Why did it happen? You got a real quick uh, review there from Mike. Let me bring in my panel tonight. Uh, from Omaha, Nebraska, Pastor Hank Kuhneman, Easley, South Carolina, Pastor Mark Burns, from somewhere in New York City, a good friend Eric Metaxas, and of course, Rick Green, in a bunker somewhere in South Texas. Uh, right, welcome, gentlemen, to the night's program. Rick, I'll start with you with this. Uh, you see what we're seeing here, this has not happened since 1910 with Joseph Cannon, and, and the, it didn't pass then. We haven't had this. What does this mean for Americans, and what does it mean for conservative Christians when they're watching what's happening? Well, Gene, first of all, we, we've all got good friends on both sides of this. Uh, Republicans are split on this, and it's all about you know tactics. What's the best way 
to move forward. I think the American people, certainly the people I talk to, we are sick and tired of the Band-Aids and the continuing resolutions and now $33 trillion in debt. I think Chip Roy said it better than anyone when he said no security, no funding. They should just stick with that line and say we will not fund the government. We will not pass any resolutions until we secure the border. That is the crisis on everybody's minds right now. We know at 10,000 a day, our nation is being destroyed right now. And I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back. That's what finally gave the impetus for this. Uh, it is unprecedented. I don't know what's going to happen at this point because of them actually passing this. Obviously, the Democrats, you know, wanted to seize the opportunity to embarrass the Republicans, embarrass McCarthy, whatever. I don't think it's an embarrassment. I think it's actually it's finally people are going to say, you know what? Wait, maybe we can change things in Washington, D.C. Maybe that's they good. will do something different. It's no more business as usual. And that's what's been accomplished here. Where it's going to go from here, I don't know. But I am thrilled to see a different ball game being played at this point. All right, let me go to Pastor Mark Burns. Uh, Pastor Mark, you, you heard this. You connected with, obviously, with the Trump campaign over the years. What's your take on what happened today? Well, it's a historic, monumental uh, occasion. I mean, first of all, let's just say uh, that this isn't chaos like some might say. This is simply um, our government being able to do what our government is able to do, to disagree at the highest level of government while still maintaining some governance to achieve the goals that we, we have. I mean, I Again, I've been speaking right now, sitting in the chair to several high-ranking uh, um, Trump campaign officials. The president right now is in a meeting discussing this very thing. I was hoping to get an exclusive uh, to get him to come on or to give us a statement. Uh, and it still may happen while I'm here on the air. But the point is, um, I believe this is a, a, a major move for the MAGA movement in America. This is allowing us to stand behind the Make America Great Again agenda. Matt Gaines done a good job in saying that I'm tired of the lobbyists who are sold out to the lobbyists. He's willing to take the $5, $10, $20 little uh, cash uh, uh, fundraisers from the everyday Americans to fund his campaign agenda. So this uh, is a wake-up call for every politician in America. Beware, because if they could do this to Kevin McCarthy, who is many millions of Americans believe have sold out the Republican caucus, the same thing can happen to you. All right, let me bring in uh, Eric Metaxas. Eric, you, you hear this? Uh, what does this say to you? Let me get your take on it. I think it's good news. I think it's good news for America. I think people like Kevin McCarthy need to understand it's over. We are not going to put up with the kinds of compromises uh, that uh, folks like him have been making with Democrats. We are... Uh, in a hellish position in this nation because of that kind of misleadership. Uh, and so this is a clear sign that most Americans have had it. And you know, it's kind of funny thing when, when you hear some Republicans talk about, oh, this is gonna embarrass Republicans. Republicans deserve to be embarrassed. Right. The Republicans that don't understand where we are as a nation they are at odds with the American people, and they are enabling the left Democrats to destroy this country. And so they need to understand they deserve to be embarrassed. They don't even deserve to be in office if they are not willing to lead. And I have to say congratulations to Matt Gates. I hope uh, he is the next governor of Florida uh, when DeSantis' uh, term is up, uh, because we need people to say, we, we've had enough. We cannot go any farther. And, and frankly, McCarthy also did not re release all of the J6 footage. Shame on him for not understanding that that is one of the priorities in a lawless nation where people are jailed for their political beliefs. You need to take that seriously. Somebody got to him. I don't know who it was. And he didn't seem to take that seriously. Uh, it's true. That's, and that's a whole nother a rabbit trail we could go down. Let me go to Pastor Hank Kuhneman. Pastor Hank, I mean, we see this. This is really government at work. I like what Eric Metaxas has said and Rick Green. Mm -hmm. We're seeing things operate the way they should have. So uh, whether we like it or not, this is this is our government at work. Well, we shouldn't really be surprised by what took place because 
if you remember, Pastor Gene and those that are watching, is they had more rounds to vote this guy in than what's even in boxing. And uh, so you knew that something was, was probably going to be coming. But here's the problem. We want the truth, the American people, about our border, about why all of this money is going to fund this, quote, Ukrainian war. And we want those that are elected officials that put America first. And uh, it's obvious that it wasn't going that direction. And I think it's a good sign for our country that there are those that are rising up saying enough is enough. Now, the part that I'm not settled in my spirit about is that the Republican Party, they need to also take this same kind of uh, fight the same kind of determination towards the radical left agenda that is destroying this country. If they would just unite and do that and fight for the children, fight for our freedoms, fight for the truth of 2020, and how about this, rally around the candidate who is leading incredibly in the primary. Lastly, God prophesied that these things would begin to happen. And I'm going to say it very quickly. He said on December 31st, 2022, watch the House of Representatives. It would become the House of Cards. He said on June 6th of 2021, that those that are in the House that are a stench in front of God's sight would be removed and new faces would arise. And lastly, he said on July 12th, 2021, that we would come into historical moments concerning the Republican Party, even the Democratic Party, and God would be known as the party crasher. And I don't think God is done. We are in for a reset and a reorder that is by the hand of God himself. Uh, I believe you're absolutely right there, Pastor I, I Let me go to uh, Rick uh, Green again. All right, so Rick, I got NBC. This is their list of uh, who they think are on the, uh, the maybes. Uh, uh, Majority Leader Steve Scalise from Louisiana, Majority Whip Tom um, Emmer from Minnesota, Representative Garrett Graves, Louisiana, House GOP Conference Chair New York, Elise Stefanik, uh, Jim Jordan, and uh, Tom Cole from Oklahoma. Uh, did any of those sound ring true to you, or do you have any idea of where this might go? Well, only one of those uh, sounds like a name that can truly bring reform in the House, and that'd be Jim Jordan. I think uh, most conservatives would uh, have enough confidence in him. I'm not sure that's the best move because we need him right now on, on the investigation of Biden and, and the impeachment, and he, there's nobody better for that role than Jim Jordan. But but we do need somebody that will actually make it a whole new ball game for everybody. And, and you know, to, to what Eric said, I, you know, I wish I could dress as good as Eric, look as good, sound as good, prop up my books as good as he does. He's so good at this. Uh, anyway, but to what Eric said, I don't care if the Republicans are embarrassed. He's 100% right on that. They need to be embarrassed. And here's the thing. Everybody's like, oh, but it'll shut down the government. And what if the government doesn't fund? They need to be shut down. I mean, if they can't secure our border, then what good are they in the first? I mean, they need to be, they're doing 17,000 things that are unconstitutional anyway. Those things shouldn't be getting getting done. So I think this is a pivotal, wonderful moment. Uh, and to what Hank said, I, I, I think it is. I mean, just listen to those prophecies. This is a time for shaking. And we're shaking up the House right now. That is a good thing. This is going to give a lot of conservative activists out there, patriots that have been wondering, can things ever really change? Right. Are we ever going to get anything different? This is going to give them a lot of hope to know, yes, we can't. That doesn't mean everything's solved. We're probably going to get a McCarthy-like person, but it shows just like they did back in January that when they stand firm, they can get the concessions that they need. And now what they've proven is if you don't follow through on those concessions, we will drop the hammer. So I'm hoping that this gives even more momentum to that small group of really good, strong conservative patriots in the House to give us even more victories in the in the coming months. Well, uh, let's talk about what happens next. Now, there's an interim speaker, but nothing can really happen until we get a speaker elected. Is that correct? Uh, no, that, that, there, there can be some operations in the in, in the House. I don't think they're now. now I'm, I was a state legislator, not a member of Congress, so I don't know all of all of their rules. But I think they can still move forward with some things. Uh, but I, it, it would be order number one. I mean, they that's they need to get that done. I don't see why that takes more than 24 hours. They ought to have a, a new speaker chosen within the next 24 hours. And is it correct that does not have to come from within the House? Now, that is absolutely accurate. Yeah, the Constitution does not require that. There's always been the rumors about why not make it Donald Trump and, and let's have a lot of fun. You really want to shake things up yeah. and uh, have the media uh, literally have heads explode on live television. I that think would that would actually be, awesome. be fun. So, yeah, let's make it, yeah, <laughs> let's make it somebody like Trump.
Yeah. Now, now I want to remind everybody watching. Uh, you saw what happened in January. We were here talking about, and everybody was throwing a rod uh, in their engines because they were like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. We can't vote. We can't get anybody elected. Uh, after five votes, I think, it, I don't know how many votes it was, uh, McCarthy was elected. Now, that was the government at work. We said it then. This is government at work. This is a great thing about our our founding fathers, the, the documents that we operate by, this is why we need to preserve America the way it is because these are the things that are set in place to make sure we have the right people in the right place. It doesn't become a banana republic, and I don't mean clothing stores. Uh, all right, let me go back to Eric Metaxas. Eric, you see this. Uh, where do you think this is going to lead in the long run? Is this going to have a lasting effect somewhere? It, it's hard. To, I, I would say yes. But I, I think here's the key. Anybody with a brain, anybody with eyes to see and ears to hear knows this country is on fire. We are in free fall. We are at a level of chaos and dysfunction uh, that we have never seen. People like Kevin McCarthy clearly don't get that. There are pastors all over this country in churches that do not get that. If you don't get that, you need to get that because th th this is not an opinion. We have a level of chaos. I mean, the open border, if there were nothing else to talk about, that is a nightmare we have never seen ever. We have that happening. We have transgender lunacy. We have leftists lying, pulling fire alarms, uh, obstructing justice, two-tiered level of justice, attacking a president of the United States, J6 people in prison. In other words, everywhere you look, you see demonic evil, and then you have people like Kevin McCarthy kind of acting like, well, we'll just pass the buck. Uh, we're, you know, we're not, it's 1985, everything's fine. Everything is not fine. Most people in America understand we need a reset. For the government to shut down would be fantastic. I think that uh, people act like, oh, it's gonna be so terrible, the optics are gonna be so bad for the Republicans, good. The Republicans deserve to be ashamed of what passes for conservative leadership. They're not conservatives. Most of them are hacks. Mitch McCann McConnell at the top of the heap. Uh, and obviously, uh, what happened to Kevin McCarthy today, uh, this is a warning to those who think we're just going to pass the buck. They're going to be maniacs, God bless them, like Matt Gates, that are going to stand between you and passing the buck. I, I, I praise God. Uh, for where we are, and there are tons of Americans praying and praying and praying. The Lord would guide us through this. Yeah, amen to that. All right, let me let me show you because you mentioned it. Let's go to that. What happened? Uh, look at this. What happened on September 30th? New Capitol Police are circulating this photo of a man pulling the fire alarm in the Cannon Building. Looks a lot like Jamal Bowman. Interestingly enough, that building is named after. Uh, who I talked about at the beginning of the program. Jim Cannon was the last time it, it, it came up for a vote. Uh, so look at this NBC Post. Bowman's office acknowledged he pulled the alarm, but suggested it was unintentional. I'm not sure how it, he, did he trip? But look, it doesn't stop there. Let me go, let's go to MSDNC and see what they had to say. Like we should give him a little break. Maybe he accidentally pulled it, watch. Last thing I want to mention, and then we're going to take a quick break. Um, there was a mention of Jamal Bowman, Congressman um, Jamal Bowman, and the pulling of some sort of fire alarm. And I just want to read for you some of the reporting so you understand what actually went on there. Um, there were some reports that began to emerge about Representative Bowman, who was um, seen pulling some sort of fire alarm um, in the Cannon House office building earlier today. We got a statement on that. Um, saying Congressman Bowman did not realize he would trigger a building alarm as he was rushing to make an urgent vote that Congressman regrets any um, confusion, just to clarify some things on that, because I know there was um, likely some folks kind of scratching their heads wondering what it was they were asking um, Speaker McCarthy about. I don't think anybody was scratching their heads, Pastor Mark. Come on, come on. What do you, did he think it was the, uh, what does he think is going to happen? You pull that alarm, I mean, the alarms are going to go off. It wasn't the button for the elevator. Uh, come on. Well, listen, Pastor Gene, what do we expect from a Democrat, right? I mean, just think about the lunacy that's coming from uh, the Democratic Party and those that are elected by that party. The, 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 the evil liberal left intention that is happening and the things that are coming out of their mouth. These are the same people 
that believe that it's okay for a late-term uh, late baby to be aborted. These are the same people who agree that, a, that there's no longer two sexes in the world, but there are be whatever you want to be. These are the same people that think that it is that instead of getting transgenders the mental health help that they need uh, and the healing that they need to be whole, these are the same people that, are, that celebrate this on a gross scale. So what do you expect for them to, uh, to, 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 to what explanation that they would give to say, oh, he accidentally picked his hand up and accidentally put it onto the uh, fire alarm and accidentally grabbed it and pulled it down and accidentally the sound just went off at a time of a very critical vote? Of course, they're going to make stupid stuff up because they have no morals in right. their policies. And I'm grateful that people like us will call evil out where it is. Yeah. Okay, Rick, I got a question for you. Uh, since you're the Constitution guy, you're my the, the closest thing I've got to it. Um, I, I meant that as a compliment. Sounded. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It sounded you know what I'm. Like you know what I mean. Me. Lance is not yeah. here, so I gotta gotta harass yeah. somebody. Yeah. Uh, so isn't I mean. Isn't this the same thing people are supposedly in jail for from J6 about obstructing government operation? 100%, man. And, and of course, uh, the best Babylon B uh, tweet yet is the one that said McCarthy was panicked and looking for a fire alarm earlier. Uh, he didn't find it, obviously. But anyway, <laughs> this is uh, exactly what I mean. Everything written in the statute that they use to charge the J6 defendants with, they could charge this guy with, you know, interrupting a proceeding uh, in all, all of those things. And intent doesn't matter, uh, according to them anyway, because that's right. what they have argued with some of these J6 defendants. As, as I, I mean, listen, Eric nailed it. These, these guys have been treated in a two-tier justice system with no none of their rights under the Bill of Rights upheld. Uh, it's been total abuse in the gulag for three years. I think they need to get some of their own medicine. Of course, it's not going to happen because the D.C. prosecutors are leftist and they don't believe in biblical justice. They only believe in social justice, which means, you know, this guy happens to be of the right party. And so because he's of the right political persuasion, he will not be prosecuted. But yes, it's Short, that was not a short answer. Short answer to your question is 100% that could go after him with the exact same statutes they're going after the J6 folks with. And look, some those people didn't mean to do that. Some of them were looking. There are people in jail that got sentenced to years in prison uh, for not even walking in the building. They were standing uh, outside. Uh, Gene, there are people that, that were no, doing nothing but praying. I mean, literally came to the Capitol right. to pray and did so for days before the event. And when they went into the Capitol, there was no barrier. The police invited them in. They walked around the rotunda and walked out. Of course, there was no intent on their part to interrupt a proceeding or any of the other things they've been they've been charged with. So, yeah, I mean, the, the injustice, and we're not talking one or two people here, Gene. Right. We're talking now over, over 1,000, and they're going after another 1,000. Uh, it's one of the greatest travesties in American history and one of the biggest injustices in American history, without doubt. I, uh, so true. Pastor Hank, you, you see all this, you hear the conversation, wow. what's going on. I mean, this is, we've got, um, yeah. it feels like, and I'm just going to use that term, it feels like suddenly things are moving. There's not just a shift, things are actually yeah. moving. Yeah, well, there is. And I think, first of all, Pastor Gene, you know, on that video with that uh, man pulling the fire alarm, I mean, you just celebrated your 29th birthday last week. How many times did you ever have this sudden urge to pull a fire alarm? You've got uh, Rick Green. He's lived seven, what, decades here on the earth. I guarantee you he never has. And most people really don't unless there really is an emergency. But here's the problem. These people have been doing this pulling these false alarms, continuing to create diversions, distractions. They're guilty of the very things that they say that they're innocent of, and they try to hang on the, the very innocent and command and declare that they're guilty. God is exposing things, and this is what we have to understand. And, and more and more of the American people are beginning to realize the foolishness of what these people are, are doing. And they think that we're just going to continue to look the other way or really take their position and see their point. America's not seeing their point. And there's a reason that they're the donkey party is because they're acting like that and people are waking up to it. Now, to answer your question, lastly, look, there's change in the air and, and it's so important that those that are watching tonight, that you do not get tired, that you don't grow weary in well-doing right. because listen, a prophet spoke 
in 1 Kings 18.41, after a hard season of three and a half years, think about how long we've been in this harsh season, and he said, listen, I hear a sound. Something is shifting. Something is changing. And he began to announce it, and there was no evidence whatsoever of the very thing that he was prophesying. And I'm here to tell the American people, yes, there's chaos. Yes, there's bad things. Yes, there's foolishness like you saw with that fire alarm. Yes, we're seeing our country looking as though it's being destroyed every day. But change is in the air. And I hear another alarm. And I'm telling you, it is a sound that is blowing. And it's the sound that is waking up in Zion a remnant who is praying and they are turning the hand of God that is bringing his justice at this time. And we will see the things we've prayed for, stood for. We're going to see a change. And, and I tell you, it may be the size of a man's hand at first, may not look like it, but ultimately it's going to break just like in a dam. It just takes a little bit of a crack and then boom, you can't stop what's coming. And I'm telling you, the enemy cannot stop as well as these what's coming and America will be and is being saved. Amen. And you know, it's a miracle in itself that we actually have a picture of the person who pulled the fire alarm. You know, when you think about it, the things that could have been hidden, that wasn't hidden. So yes, agree. We have good things to be happy about. All right. President Trump. <clears throat> Meanwhile, uh, President Trump responds after his first day with court. Look, and look at this, and then I'll go to Pastor Mark. Watch. Well, I think that was very good. That last five minutes was outstanding because the judge essentially conceded that the statute of limitations that uh, we won at the Court of Appeals is in effect. Therefore, about 80 percent of the case is over. I was going to come out and say that, as you know, we're not entitled to a jury, which is pretty unusual in the United States of America. So uh, we think it's very unfair that I don't have a jury. But uh, the judge's last statement was very fair. And if I read it right, I'll let perhaps one of the lawyers speak to it. But Cliff, maybe you'll speak to it if you would. But uh, the way I interpret that and the way everyone else in the room seems to interpret that is that the statute of limitations uh, is a very real thing in this country. And that would be about 80% of this case would be over. Mark Burns' statute of limitations ran, I mean, over 80% of it. It seems like they're, this is lawfare just to keep him busy and uh, whatever they can do to keep him out of running. Uh, what's your take on what we've seen today? Well, you know, Pastor Gene, the American people just aren't falling for this. I mean, again, every time that um, the, 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 the Biden, uh, Gestapo, DOJ goes after uh, Donald Trump, every time there is a bump in the polls, um, every time he gets a bump in the polls, because Americans are realizing that what they're doing to Donald J. J. Trump, no person should have to do it. No person should have to go through that, let alone a former president and the leading candidate uh, who is most likely, based off of every poll, would beat Joe Biden in a head-to-head -head election. And so this two-tier system is one of the reasons why Matt Gates was successful, because Republicans are tied, and I love what Pastor Hank said earlier that even though we removed a, a Kevin McCarthy, now Republicans have to unite more than ever, get behind Donald J. Trump and start going after the liberal policies by Democrats. Go out just as hard to go after uh, the evil that is happening within the policies of America. Until then, Donald Trump has said it a thousand times. He said it personally to me. Pastor, if they can come after me, trust me. They can come after you and your church. And for every believer that's watching this broadcast, you need to make sure you are praying like never before. We, our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty, they are spiritual, and we have some principalities and territories to take over. You have to be doing it now in the spirit because if we lose our country, we will lose our churches here in America. Amen. All right. Thank you, Mark. I know you have to go. Got a plane to catch. But listen, we do have a covenant, as our founder, Kenneth Copeland, says. We've got a covenant, and we're relying on that covenant between God himself and George Washington, between God himself and Robert Hunt in 1607. We're going to stand on that covenant. Things are turning around. They're already getting better. We have a reason to be encouraged. 
All right, so let us uh, let me go back here. Rick, uh, look at this. Benny Johnson post this tweet, and we'll kind of continue with the Trump line um, story. Trump hit with a limited gag order, forbidding him from talking about Judge Arthur Engeron and court staff. Uh, wh what's the purpose of this? Well, why would they issue this gag order? Oh, it's petty, man. And, and, and you know, we've talked about this before and with other cases, how much I dislike gag orders in any case. I think uh, free, freedom of speech should allow you to talk about any case at any time publicly. Uh, but but this whole thing, man, think about it. This, this judge is such a leftist hack. There's a video going around right now showing him in his own words about seven years ago talking about how he gets to overrule jury decisions based on his emotions and based on how he feels. That's the type of guy we got on the on the bench here. And of course, as we know, we, we talked about this, I think it was last week or week before last, uh, about this particular case. Who's the injured party here? I, I mean, even if Trump thought more highly of his properties and the value of those properties than other people did, who was harmed? None of the banks were harmed. Nobody that loaned money in these cases were harmed. Everybody got their money back, made money on their money. Everybody won. So this is just an attempt, again, to go after this man and his family and try to destroy his life, destroy his family, take his property. That's what leftists do. Uh, that's why what Eric said earlier in the program, this whole idea of a two-tier justice system, it destroys a nation. Uh, that That's why what's happening in Congress has to change. Uh, again, people knowing what time it is, realizing just what it is we're up against here. They're trying to absolutely destroy the nation and the justice system. You can't have a free nation and a constitutional republic if you have a two-tier justice system. All right, let me go to Eric uh, out of that. Uh, Eric, you want to you want to comment on that? I mean, this is two-tier justice system. I, I would say anybody in America right now is looking at this going, yeah, for sure. Your thoughts? Well, that's, that's the point. Listen, we should be weeping over this. Like, two-tier justice systems are just words. This is evil. Is. This is absolute evil. The United States of America, patriots have died, have died for our liberties, for our system of justice. The idea that people would be abusing it to this point, the idea that we would have judges like this judge uh, so high-handedly behaving it is inconsistent with who we are as an American people. It is a grievous thing. I can only praise God that he is exposing this and that there are going to be Americans today, every day, who have been on the fence. They see these things and they finally wake up. That needs to be our prayer, that those who can be awakened would awaken, because what we are seeing is astonishing. We need to be astonished and grieved, and we need to weep that this nation uh, under God uh, has been allowed to come to this place. And, and if you're not in the fight uh, to change this, uh, if you're going to a church that is not in the fight to change this, get out of that church. We need to be all in. Uh, this is about justice. These are sacred principles that are that are being uh, that have been eroded uh, to a point that I never dreamt in my life we could see such things. Yeah, and, and you know, you wrote that book, Letters to the American Church. Um, I, I, I must, I gotta tell you, Eric, I, I am still shocked. Um, I, I, we, we make some head, headway with the church in America, but it seems every time we make some headway, I'm stood up and face to face with someone that doesn't want to offend their, either their Democrat parishioners or they want people to not, you know, be not mix politics with the church. I, I mean, it doesn't seem like we've really addressed the issue at hand, or we're actually uh, ignoring what's going on. Uh, you know, uh, explain about letters to the American church and how that addresses that. Well, the, I mean, the the, the 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 thesis of my book, Letter to the American Church, is that the silence of the American church in the face of evil today is precisely the same as the silence of the German church as the Nazis were rising in power. People at the time, Christians at the time, could have claimed, they said, look, we don't, we don't know where this is going. We think we'll be fine. We don't think it's time for us to get political and divisive. It was precisely the time. If you were tuned to the Spirit of God, you would have known. You would have had the discernment to say, we need to be all in against the evil that is rising. And if we who are the church do not stand against this evil, God will give us over to ourselves. The nation will be in ruins. That's what happened to Germany. That is exactly what is happening today. So I say to people, if you're going to a church that does not take these things seriously, that says, we don't want to be political, oh, we don't want to be divisive, 
You need to run from that church as though you're running from a burning building. God has uh, a curse. Jesus cursed the fig tree because it was not bearing fruit. Those churches that are playing church, they are not the church. They are playing church, and they are trying to hang on to numbers and people. They're not trusting God uh, to provide for them. They're not trusting God to send them people. They are trusting uh, in, in, in horses and in, in, in the things of the flesh. And if you're going to that kind of a church, I beg you, brothers and sisters, get out, find a church where they are awake to where we are in the nation, prophetically awake to where we are and to raising up a remnant to pray against it and to stand against it and to act against it. Uh, so true. And I recommend all of you get, if you haven't read it, get, uh, get Eric's book on Bonhoeffer, History shows us exactly what happens. Let me go to you, Pastor Hank, on that. You know, you and I have talked about this often, um, friends of ours or acquaintances of ours that end up not being willing to stand up. Are you seeing any shift there in your part of the country? You know, I, I am. Uh, there's a small remnant that's arising, but sadly, there still are those that are playing what I call spiritual Switzerland. You know, listening to Rick Green and, and Eric here, and they mention about, you know, it's really time to, to stand up, to do something. And if you look at 2 Samuel chapter 11, there was a time when David, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, he ran to the battle. He even said, is there not a cause? But in 2 Samuel chapter 11, he's like a lot of pastors. He's like a lot of people. It says it was time for the kings to go forth out to battle. And David decided to withdraw from the battle, take himself out of the battle like a lot of pastors are. I uh, just uh, saw uh, a pastor recently, uh, and I truthfully lost respect. And, and they said, you know, uh, I'm just about preaching the gospel. I stay uh, out of politics. I just preach the word. And I thought to myself, yeah, while you hand America's future to us who are standing and who are preaching the gospel, and so that you can do what you said is your lane or your calling. But what they don't realize that pastor is if he doesn't stand up and if we don't stand up, he won't be able to preach the gospel. That's and right. just like David, you take yourself out of the battle and here's what happened to David. It's happening to a lot of people that are withdrawing themselves. They're being silent is he got seduced. He got seduced by Bathsheba. Today, people are being seduced by, well, I can't speak out. I can't judge. I can't, you know, involve myself in politics. That's a very, very dangerous place to be. But Pastor Gene, I really believe with all my heart that there was a time, if I could say this without taking too much time, in Exodus 14, there are two conditions that's happening. Number one, people are blaming. They, they blamed Moses. Moses was the leader that God raised up. Today, I'm watching pastors and congregations can't even discern God's hand on Donald Trump. It's the fact we're talking about him. He's still standing. There's an anointing on him. If, C if CNN and Fox was reporting today, they would make you all believe that Daniel would have uh, died in the lion's den or he died. Or they would make you think that it was all over for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But no, there was the fourth man that appeared. God stopped the mouths of lions. There's something on Donald Trump that cannot be stopped. There was something on Moses that could not be stopped. Second, the people in Exodus 14 wanted to go back to Egypt. They were so quick to be willing to lose their freedoms. And that's what Eric is talking about. We've got right. to wake up or we're going to lose our freedoms. That's so true. We must wake up. But like you said, both you gentlemen have said, uh, we need to look back at history, see, or look back in the word. We will get the direction we need. Amen. That's why it's important. If you don't know what's going on, it's important you find out what's going on. In fact, Joe Biden said this about when he left the Senate and Strom Thurmond. Watch when I left the Senate, I was able to convince Strom Thurmond to vote for the Voting Rights Act. Strom Thurmond. Strom Thurmond. Strom Thurmond. North Carolina, Strom Thurmond. All right, well, let me, let's break that down a little bit. Uh, he said when he left the Senate, he convinced Strom Thurmond to vote for the Voting Rights Act. However, Rick Green, Thurmond died in 2003. Biden left the Senate in 2009. The Voting Rights Act passed in 1965. Strom Thurmond actually voted against it. <laughs> I, uh, Rick, this is amazing I, I, stuff. I can't help but think about, I was doing this event with a congressman that had just turned 81. 
and uh, and he's int actually introducing me, and he and he goes, Rick, you probably think I'm old at 81, but he said I went to Senator Strom Thurmond's 100 year birthday party, and Thurmond looked over at me and said. Oh, to be 80 again. Anyway, that, that's all I can think about when you when you mentioned Strom Thurmond. I have to go back to Eric for a second. I, I, I'm telling you, this book, Letter of the American Church, and I know I was poking fun of Eric earlier because country boys love to make fun of the Yale graduates, but but this book is the only book I recommend in uh, our, our one-year Bible study. So we go through the Founders Bible every year with thousands of Constitution coaches around the country. And at the end, the last few days of the year, they read Eric's book, Letter to the American Church. And here's why. Because the people that Hank's talking about, these pastors that say, oh, you're just supposed to be preaching the gospel. Those pastors obviously don't know what the gospel is because Jesus said the gospel was to make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. They're lying about what the gospel is. They're limiting the gospel to just sharing Jesus instead of actually teaching Jesus and making disciples. And what Eric is doing in this letter is he's giving us this intellectual ammunition we need to take to those pastors and wake them up. So it's the one book that we recommend in our Bible study throughout the year. So, Eric, God bless you for writing it, man. We need it desperately. Uh, I have coaches all the time asking, you know, Flashpoint Army people asking all the time, how do I convince my pastor to do a biblical citizenship class? How do I get them into, into biblical civics? And I say, give them a letter to the American church, because if that doesn't wake them up, do exactly what Eric said. Leave and go find a Black Road Regiment pastor that will actually That's teach right. the whole counsel of God. All right, I'm going to let Eric comment, but first I'm going to play this clip and let him talk about it. Bill Meyer talks about Ruth Bader Biden. Watch. New rule, someone has to convince President Biden that if he runs again, he's going to turn the country back over to Trump and go, <laughs> <laughs> and go down in history as Ruth Bader Biden. <laughs> the person who doesn't know when to quit and so does great damage to their party and their country. All of us who like Joe Biden have been struggling lately with the political situation in the Democratic Party. An incumbent we admire who acquitted himself well in a first term, but who even members of his own party don't want to see run for a second. You know that future headlines bit we do? Well, the most predictable headline ever is presidential race tied. Two weeks before every election, it's always tied. No matter who is running, the vast majority just vote for the D or the R. But Biden is the one Democrat who gives pause to so many people, even in his own party. <laughs> Joe, you did noble service for your country, and you checked that big box, the President of the United States. Of course, as a politician, you're naturally going to say, but the work is not finished. Of course not. It never is. But it's time to let someone else finish it. You don't want to go down as Ruth Bader Biden. <laughs> America is calling, Joe, and it's saying, that's not our car, Grandpa, we're over here. All right, let, let me, uh, before, I, I mean, that's funny, and he's ma making fun of Joe Biden there, which I must say, the reason, when you say, well, Gene, why did you do that was so disrespectful? No. Uh, let me make sure you understand, it is not his age that is the problem. It's not age. It's the mental capacity of what Joe Biden's dealing with is what we're talking about. This is running the free world, the, the most important world leader, or was. Uh, you know, Eric, when we see this, uh, what, what was meant in jest uh, really is uh, the rest of the world is mocking us because of Joe Biden. Well, I mean, look, it's got nothing to do with his age. It's got nothing to do with his mental capacity. It has everything to do with his moral character. The man has no soul. He does not believe in anything except power. He will do anything and go along with any leftward uh, American destroying policy if that suits him. Uh, he's the definition of political hack. Exactly what the founders instituted was this idea that we're going to have a country governed by the people. We're not going to have people uh, who are just amassing power and they're a political class and we're under them. That's the antithesis of the founders' vision. Joe Biden is the perfect example of the antithesis of the founders' vision, that, that he is just a, a political hack. It's like when people talk about Mitch McConnell's age, uh, Mitch McConnell froze up. He... he I, I prefer him not to be able to speak or to do anything because what he is doing is harming the country. 
Uh, so we have leaders like like Biden that, first of all, Biden will not, they will railroad him out. He will not get to run for a second term. They're not that dumb. They'll do anything. They'll pull a fire alarm. They'll do whatever they need to do to make sure that he's not their nominee. They'll make an excuse. They'll lie. But we are in such a grievous place in America that the church needs to pray and to get activated and to get voting, do everything we can to save this nation. And shame on Bill Maher for being so dumb that he thinks that Biden acquitted himself well in his first term. What, what, what a joke. I mean, that is, it's unbelievable that, that somebody like Bill Maher could believe such a thing. All right. So since you mentioned Mitch McConnell, I had that for later, but I want to make now's a good time to pull this up. Gentlemen, let me show you this uh, breaking report. FTX founder Sam Bankman Free donated millions of dollars to McConnell's list of anti-Trump Republicans after meeting with the Senate minority leader. Huh. Interesting. Donald Trump Jr. says rhinos in the Senate are trying to jam billions more in Ukraine funding down our throats. Our voters deserve to know who's selling them out. First up, Mitch McConnell. He says funding Ukraine is the GOP's number one priority. Call his office and let him know if you agree. And there's his number. We're going to put that on the screen. Thank you. Uh, Rick, let me go to you out of that. Uh, is it really, is Mitch McConnell on the take? Well, you know, I always look at these guys that go to Washington worth maybe a little bit, and then a few years later, they're worth millions. This is a guy that's now worth tens of millions yeah. of dollars. Uh, and I have to ask, how how did that happen? Um, so, yeah, even if he didn't personally get the money uh, from FTX and, and, and these, uh, these hacks, uh, no question that he funneled it to the candidates that he wanted to, to support. And, and Eric, again, is, is right. Listen, Republicans need to clean their own house. This is ridiculous to have these folks that are not mentally able to do the job. Uh, there's no question that Joe Biden it did not have noble service, as Bill Maher said. Um, and uh, neither, I mean, Mitch McConnell did some good. Let's thank him for holding off the filling of Scalia's seat. That's the one thing I, I look back and thank him for. But he's a disaster right now. And there's no reason for this. And we, and we don't have to be mean about it or cruel about it. There's nothing mean or cruel about saying, for instance, with Joe Biden, the reason for the 25th Amendment being put into the Constitution was for exactly this moment. Why are we not using the Constitution, living out the laws, upholding these things? Right. And it's all about power. It's all about these people holding That's on. Correct. The Biden family have been grifters for 50 years. They have been living off of our tax dollars. And you can bet he's going to ride this thing out as long as he possibly can. Uh, hopefully his own party, as Eric said, will make sure that he's not the candidate. I'm going to triple down again and say there's no way he's going to be the one on the ballot next November. Well, we, time will tell. That's for sure. We're seeing this great thing. All right. So let me sh explain why I'm putting Mitch McConnell's number up. If you want to call Mitch McConnell's office and tell him if you agree, you can tell him that because he says funding Ukraine is the GOP's number one priority. How about closing the border? Uh, how about uh, stopping some of this ridiculous pork? Uh, but listen, we've got, we, you need to call. Whether you agree or disagree, you need to call. So I'm calling you out, Flashpoint Army. P write that number down, 202-224-2541. Call his office, let him know what you think. Uh, I know you guys do this. So there you are. Call the number, let him know. Pastor Hank, when we see things like this, uh, uh, I'm going to ask you a real softball question, but how should we as the church respond? You know, it sounds like I'm attacking Mitch McConnell. I just don't think he should be doing what he's doing. Well, we have to go back to, first of all, what God says in his word. And he talks about in the book of, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, the book of Psalm 37, that God is the one that deals with evil doers or those that have done evil. So we've got to go to the word and, and, and hold God to what his word says, but also we need to decree his word concerning some of the things that we're seeing with these, you know, liberals and these rhinos. The next thing we need to do is take what God has been saying with the rhema word, with his prophets. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, believe the prophets and you will be established. You believe God and you will, you will prosper as well. So I think that we need to start taking what God says in his word, what God is saying prophetically, and we need to do something with it. And that is we need to put it before the face of 
of God. You know, Pastor Gene, we often quote 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and we don't realize that it starts off with if my people. And we th sometimes think that prophecies are just automatic or that it's just going to happen and I don't have to do anything. No, there's the if factor. We have to do something. But here's the good news. Jeremiah 29, 11 says that God has a plan for us. He has a plan for this nation. He has a plan for you that are watching. And it's a plan to give you hope. It's a plan to give you a future, to give your children a future, to give this nation a future. And watch this, to give you an expected end. An expected end isn't a surprise. It's already revealed to you. You expect it. God is going to reveal it. He has been revealing it. So I just think we need to put our foot on the gas and we need to hold these people accountable. And uh, it's the only way that we're going to begin to let them know that there's more that are saying enough is enough and that they've been getting by with what they've been doing for too long. I, I agree. So, so we, we must stand up. This is all about standing yes. up uh, everything yep. today. All right. Uh, let's talk about since the last time we were on the air, uh, Diane Feinstein passed. Uh, look at this. Gavin Newsom will appoint Emily's list president, LaFonza Butler, to fill the, the seat of the late Diane Feinstein, elevating the head of fundraising juggernaut that per works to elect Democratic women who support abortion rights. Uh, and there she is. LaFonza Butler says, I'm honored to accept Gavin Newsom's, I'm sorry, Gavin Newsom's nomination to be U.S. Senator for a state. I have made my home and honored by his trust in me to serve the people of California and this great nation. Let's keep going. Uh, I'm thrilled. New name, same mission. There it is. Reproductive freedom for all. But now let me show you, guys. Jason, we're going to keep going here. Uh, look at her tweet here, or look at her, uh, her her social media post here. Where does she say she lives? Right there in the, button, the next, the next uh, slide there. It says that she lives in Maryland. You see that? Maryland. Wait a minute. Isn't she taking over for uh, California? Well, if you look then, she she scrubbed it. Run, run, win, change the world. Uh, she took care of that. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we got, we must pay attention. Uh, we must be alert. We must be aware. Um, there are people out, Rick, and we'll, we'll wrap up here and uh, go around the horn one last time. There are people here in America that really are not for America's good. I know that sounds like a duh comment, but w there yeah. really are people that don't want to uh, see things there for their own pockets or their pockets of their friends or, or they've got their own Epstein's list, whatever. Rick, uh, this seems to be we continue to see more and more corruption revealed. Well, we said earlier, it's, you know, it's all about power. This appointment may be the most uh, racist, uh, misogynist, homophobic appointment in political history. Uh, it had nothing to do with her qualifications. I mean, she is definitely very pro-abortion, very liberal, but it was all about the color of her skin, her sex organs, and her sexual choices. That's what caused Gavin Newsom to appoint her. That should hack off every woman of color out there. Uh, if I were appointed for being a white straight male, I would be offended that I was appointed for that instead of my qualifications. Uh, so every black female in the country should be offended by this appointment. Um, it, this is this is shameful. This is racist. It's the opposite of MLK saying That's we right. ought to be judged based on the content of our character, not the color of our skin. He didn't go on to say and not our sexual proclivities and all the other things. Uh, but what an embarrassment. What, what more should we expect from Gavin Newsom uh, and the left? This is exactly what Joe Biden did when he chose Kamala Harris. It didn't have anything to do with her qualifications, which is obvious. It had everything to do with her color of skin uh, and her sex organs. So it's an embarrassment, but it's, it's the end result of, of leftism and Marxism. And uh, that's why we have to defeat them. And that's why people watch Flashpoint is to learn how to defeat them, not right. just to complain. We're going to take the actions necessary to bring back biblical that's civics right. in this country. Amen. So if you're not if you're not watching, if you're not a part, if you haven't gone through the biblical civics course, we'll put that uh, that website up there with Rick. Uh, we've been watching him. He's doing a live on Monday night. Uh, we watched again last night. It's great, great material. Uh, it's not boring. You will enjoy just go to biblicalcivics.com and sign up. You can find all the details there. Uh, let's go to Eric Metaxas, although I am glad, um, Rick, that the straight white male part. Uh, uh, Eric, uh, <laughs> your thoughts as we wrap up here? I just have to say that many Americans, including many Americans who are not uh, openly Christian, understand that there's something special about this country, that God has had his hand on this country. We've come 
to an inflection point. We have never seen the country uh, in as bad a shape as it is right now. The question is whether people will wake up and take action. I honestly say it again and again. Uh, you know, people say, oh, give a, a letter to the American church to your pastor. Uh, if your pastor uh, does not turn on a dime and understand he needs to repent of being quiet about all these things, I say it again, folks, you need to leave that church. Germans went to churches that did nothing to speak against right. Hitler. We in the American church must be a part of what God is doing by his grace. Amen. All right, Hank, Pastor Hank, you got like Amen. 30 seconds to come in and pray before we go off the air. Well, I, I just want to say Romans 9 says that we would be like Sodom and Gomorrah unless God had left us a remnant. You make a difference, you're making a difference. And I'm telling you, America will be saved. God, we speak your mercy, your grace, and we ask you to continue to raise up this country and wake up your people, Amen. wake up yeah. our pastors, and wake up those that call upon your name and remember your covenant and those that covenanted with you that this nation will be made great again. And we repent repent and we look to you for your help and for you to heal this land in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.